of Slytherin. He was standing at the end of a very long, dimly lit chamber, towering out two stone pillars entwined with more carved serpents, rose to support to the ceiling lost in the darkness, casting long black shadows through the odd greenish gloom that filled the place. His heart beating very fast, Harry stood listening to the chill silence. Could the ballast be lurking in a shadowy corner behind a pillar? And where's Ginny? He pulled out his wand and moved forward towards the serpent's col serpentine column. Very carefully, footsteps echoed loudly off the shadowy walls. He kept his eyes narrowed, ready to clamp them shut at the smallest sign. The hollow eye sockets of stone snakes seemed to be followed, following him. More than once, with a jolt of his stomach, he thought he saw one stir. Then, as he drew level with the last pair of pillars of the statue high in the chamber itself loomed into view, standing against the black back wall, Harry had to crane his neck to look up into the giant face above. It was an ancient monkey, monkeyish with a long thin bear that fell almost to the bottom of the wizard's sweeping stone robes. There were two enormous gray feet stood on the smooth chamber floor. And between the feet, face down, lay a small, black-robed figure, flaming red hair. Jenny, Harry muttered, sprinting over to her, dropping to her, his knees. Jenny, don't be dead. Please don't be dead. He flung his wand aside, grabbed Jenny's shoulders, and turned her over. Her face was white as marble and as cold, yet her eyes were closed. So she wasn't petrified, but then she must be. Jenny, please wake up, Harry muttered desperately, shaking Jenny's head, lolled hopelessly from side to side. She won't wake up, a, a said a voice, soft voice. Harry jumped and spun around on his knees. A tall, black-haired boy was leaning against the nearest pillar, watching. He was strangely blurred around the edges, as though Harry was looking at him through the misted window, but there was no mistaking it was him. Tom? Tom Riddle? Riddle nodded, not taking his eyes off Harry's face. What do you mean she won't wake? Harry said desperately. She's not... She's not... She's still alive, said Riddle, but only just. Harry stared at him. Tom Riddle had been Hogwarts fifty years ago. Yet there he stood, a weird misty light shining about him, not a day older than sixteen. Are you a ghost? Harry said uncertainly. I'm a memory, said Riddle quietly. Preserved in a diary for fifty years, he pointed towards the floor near the statue. Giant toes lying there, open, was the little black diary Harry had found in the morning morning Meadows bathroom. For a second, Harry wondered how it had got there, but then there were more pressing matters to be de to deal with. You've got to help me, Tom, Harry said, raising Jenny head again. We've got to get her out of here. There's a ballast. I don't know where it is, but it could be along any moment. Please help me. Riddle didn't move. Harry, sweating, managed to hoist Ginny half off the floor and bent and picked up his wand again. But his wand was gone. Did you see? He looked up. Riddle was still watching him, twirling Harry's wand between his fingers, long fingers. Thanks, said Harry, stretching his hand out for it. A smile curled to the corners of Riddle's mouth. He continued to stare at Harry, twirling his wand idly. Listen, said Harry urgently, his knees sagging with Jenny's dead weight. We've got to go. If the ballast comes, it won't come until it's cold, said Riddle calmly. Harry lowered Jenny back to the floor, unable to hold her up any longer. What do you mean? he said. Look, give me my wand. I might need it. Riddle smiled broaden. You won't be needing it, he said. Harry stared at him. What do you mean I won't? I've waited a long time for this, Harry Potter, said Riddle. For a chance to see you, to speak to you. Look, said Harry, losing patience. I don't think you get it. We're in the Chamber of Secrets. We can talk later. We're going to talk now, said Riddle, with a smiling broadly. He pocketed with Harry's wand. Harry stared at him. 
There was something very funny going on here. How had Jenny get like this? He asked slowly. Well, that's an interesting question, said Riddle pleasantly. And quite a long story. I suppose a real reason Jenny Weasley is like this is because she opened her heart and spilled out all her secrets in it to an invisible stranger. What are you talking about? said Harry. The diary, said Riddle. My diary, little Jenny's, been writing in it months and months, telling me all the pitiful worries and woes, how her brothers tease her, how she had to come to school with second-hand robes and books, and how Riddle's eyes glinted, how she didn't think famous, good, great Harry Potter would ever like her. All the time he spoke, Riddle's eyes never left Harry's face. There was almost a hungry look to them. It's very boring having to listen to the silly little girl's troubles of an eleven-year-old girl, he went on. But I was patient, and I wrote back. I was sympathetic. I was kind. Ginny simply loved me. No one's ever understood me like you, Tom. I'm really glad I've got the diary to confide in. It's like having a friend I can carry around in my pocket. Riddle laughed a high, cold laugh and didn't suit him. It made him his hair, the hairs on stand up on the back of Harry's neck. If I say myself, Harry, I've always been able to charm people I needed. So Jenny poured out her soul to me, and her soul happened to be exactly what I needed. I grew stronger and stronger on a diet of her deepest fears, her darkest secrets. I grew powerful, more far more powerful than little Miss Weasley, powerful enough to stop feeding Miss Weasley a few of my secrets, to stop putting a little my soul back into her. What do you mean? said Harry, whose mouth had gone dry. Haven't you guessed it yet, Harry Potter? said Riddle softly. Ginny Weasley opened the Chamber of Secrets. She strangled the school monsters. A roosters. She doubled threatening messages on the wall of the serpents of Slytherin, four mudbloods, and the squibs cat. No, Harry whispered. Yes, said Harry calmly, er, Riddle calmly. Of course she didn't know what she was doing at first. It was very amusing. Ah, oh, I wish I could have, have seen her new diary entries. For more interesting they became. Dear Tom, he recited, watching Harry's horrid face. I think I'm Losing my memory, there's a rooster feathers all over my robes, and I don't know how they got there. Dear Tom, I can't remember what I did last night, the one night of Halloween, but a cat was attacked, and I've got paint all down my front. Dear Tom, Percy keeps telling me I'm pale, and I'm not myself. I think he suspects me. There was another attack today, and I didn't know where I was. Tom, what am I going to do? I think I'm going mad. I think I'm the one attacking everyone, Tom. Harry's fists were now clenched, his nails digging deep into his palms. It took a very long time for the squib little Jenny to stop at trusting her diary, said Riddle. But she finally became suspicious and tried to dispose of it. And that's where you came in, Harry. You found it. And I couldn't have been more delighted. Of all the people who could have picked up was you. Very person I want, wanted was anxious to meet. And why did you want to meet me? Said Harry in anger. Who was, cor anger was coursing through him. And it was an effort to try to keep his voice steady. Well, you see, Ginny told me about you, Harry. Said Riddle. The whole fascinating history. His eyes over the lightning scar on Harry's head. And then their expression grew hungrier. I knew I must find out about you, talk to you, meet you if I could. So I decided to show my famous capture of that great oaf, Hagrid, to gain your trust. Hagrid's my friend, said Harry, whose voice was now shaking. And you framed him, didn't you? I thought you made a mistake, but... Riddle laughed in a high laugh la la again. Ha! It was my word against Hagrid's. Well, you can imagine how it looked to old Armando Dipper, or Dippet. 
On the one hand, Tom Riddle, poor but brilliant, parentless, but so brave, school prefect, model student. On the other hand, a big, blundering Hagrid, in trouble every other week and trying to raise werewolf cubs under his bed, sneaking off to the forbidden forest to wrestle trolls. But I admit, even I was surprised at how well their planned work. I thought someone must realize the Hagrid couldn't possibly be the heir of Slytherin. It had taken me five whole years to find out everything I could about the Chamber of Secrets and discover the secret entrance, as though Hagrid had the brains or the power. Only the transfiguration teacher, Dumbledore, seemed to think Hagrid was innocent. The... He persuaded Dippet to keep Hagrid on, train him as a gamekeeper. Yes, I think Dumbledore might have guessed. Dumbledore never seemed to like me as much as all the other teachers did. I bet Dumbledore saw right through you, said Harry. His teeth gritted. Well, he certainly kept an annoyingly close watch on me. And after Hagrid was expelled, and Riddle carelessly said, <laughs> I knew it wouldn't be safe to open the chamber again while I was still at school. But I wasn't going to waste those long years I'd spent searching for it. I decided to leave behind a diary preserving my 16-year-old self in the pages so that one day, with luck, I'd be able to fi find another lead in my footsteps and finish Lazar Slytherin's noble work. Well, you haven't finished it, said Harry triumphantly. No one's died this time, not even a cat. In a few hours, the mandrake drought will be ready, and everyone will be petrified will be all right again. Haven't I already told you, said Riddle quietly, that killing mudbloods doesn't matter to me any more. For many, many months now, a new target has been you. Harry stared at him. Imagine how angry I was when the next time my diary was opened, it was Ginny. Who had was writing to me, not you. She saw you with the diary. You see, she panicked. What if you found out about the her work in no, to work in it? It appeared, reappeared the secrets to you. What if worse? I told you who'd been str strangling the roosters. So the foolish little brat waited until the dormitory was deserted, stole it back. But I knew that I must what I must do. It was clear to me that you were on the trail of Slytherin's heir from everything Ginny had told me about you. I knew you would go to any length to solve the mystery, particularly if one of your best friends was attacked, and Ginny had told me the whole school was buzzing because you could speak Postletongue. So I made Ginny write her own farewell on the wall and come down here to wait. She struggled and cried and became very very boring, but there isn't much life left in her. She put up too much into the diary and to me, enough to let me leave it in my pages at last. I have been waiting for you to appear. Since we arrived here, I knew you'd come. I have many questions for you, Harry Potter. Like what? Harry spat, fist clench. Well, said Riddle, smiling pleasantly. How is it that you, a skinny boy with no extraordinary magical talent, managed to defeat the greatest widows of all time? How did you escape with nothing but a scar while Lord Voldemort's powers were destroyed? There was an odd red gleam in his hungry eyes now. Why do you care how I escaped, said Harry slowly. Voldemort was after you, after your time. Voldemort, said Riddle softly, is my past, my present. And my future, Harry Potter. He pulled Harry's wand from his pocket and began to trace through the air, writing the shimmering words, Thomas Marvalo Riddle. Then he waved his wand, and the letters of his name rearranged themselves into, I am Lord Voldemort. You see, he whispered. It was a name I already was using at Hogwarts to my most intimate friends only. Of course, you think I was going to be, use a filthy muggle father's name forever? <laughs> In whose veins runs the blood of Slazar Slytherin himself through my mother's side? 
I kept the name of a foul, common muggle who abandoned me even when I was born just because he found out his wife was a witch. No, Harry. I fashioned myself a new name. I named a new wizard, and new wizards everywhere would one day speak. And then, when I became the greatest sorcerer in the world, Harry's brain seemed to have jammed. He stared numbly at the at Riddle, at the orphan boy who had grown into a murderer, Harry's own parents, and so many others. At last, he forced himself to speak. You're not, he said, quite full voice of hatred. Not what, snapped Riddle. The greatest sorcerer in the world, Harry said, breathing fast. Sorry to disappoint you and all, but the greatest wizard in the world is Albus Dumbledore. Everyone says so. Even when you were strong, you didn't dare try to take over Hogwarts. Dumbledore saw through you when you were just at school, and he will fit frighten you, wherever you were hiding in those days. The smile was gone from Riddle's face, to be replaced by a very ugly look. Dumbledore has been driven out of the castle by mere memory of me, he hissed. He's not as gone as you might think, Harry retorted. He was speaking in random, wanting to scare Riddle, wishing, rather, believing it to be true. Riddle opened his mouth, but froze. Music was coming from somewhere. Riddle whirled around to stare dark down the empty chamber. The music was growing louder and louder. It was eerie, spider-tingling, unearthly. It lifted the hair on Harry's scalp. It made his heart feel as though it was swelling up twice his normal size. Then, as the music reached the pitch that Harry felt was vibrating inside his own ribs, flames erupted at the top of the nearest pillar. Crimson bird the size of a swan had appeared, piping its weird music, and it vaulted to the vaulted ceiling. It had glittering golden tail as long as a peacock's, and as gleaming golden talons, which were gripping a tag bundle. Seconds later, the bird was flying straight at Harry and dropped the ragged thing it was carrying at his feet, and then landed heavily with this on his shoulder. As it folded its great wings, Harry looked up and saw it had long, sharp, golden beak and beady black eyes. The bird stopped singing, and it sat to warm next to Harry's cheek, grazing steadily, gazing steadily at Riddle. That's a phoenix, said Riddle, staring shrewdly back at it. Fox, said Harry, breathed. He felt the bird's cold claws squeeze his shoulder gently. And that, said Riddle, now eyeing the ragged thing and Fox had dropped, that's, that's the old school's sorting hat. So it was, patched, frayed, and dirty. It laid motionless at Harry's feet. Riddle began to laugh again. He laughed so hard that the dark chamber rang with it, as though ten riddles were laughing at once. This is what Dumbledore sends to a, his defender? A songbird and an old hat? <laughs> Do you feel brave, Harry Potter? Do you feel safe now? Harry didn't answer. He might not see what use Fox was sorting hat, but he was no longer alone, and he waited for Riddle to stop laughing with the courage mounting. To business, Harry, said Riddle, smiling broadly. Twice. In your past, in my future, we have met. And twice I have failed to kill you. How did you survive? Tell me everything. The longer you talk, he added softly. Well, the longer you stay alive. Harry was thinking fast, weighing his chances. Riddle had the wand and Harry had Fox and the sorting hat. Hmm. Neither of which would be a match for a good duel. It looked bad, all right, but the longer Riddle stood there, the more life was dwindling out of Ginny. And the, in the meantime, Harry noticed suddenly that Riddle's outline was becoming clearer and more solid. If it had to be a fight between him and Riddle, better sooner than later. No one knows why you lost your powers when you attacked me, said Harry abruptly. I don't know myself. But I know why you couldn't kill me. Because my mother died to save me. My common muggle-born mother, he added, shaking with suppressed rage. She stopped you from killing me. 
and I have seen the real you. I saw you last year. You're a wreck. You're barely alive. That's where all your power got you. You're hiding. You're ugly. You're foul.